Can you guess what's shaking up the EV scene right now? The electric vehicle market is taking a nosedive and it's happening as we chat. Brace yourself for the mother of all auto crashes. Don't even think about snagging an EV at this moment. The middle class is getting a brutal wake-up call. EVs? More like a big fat scam. Our politicians are pushing us to fork out cash for overpriced EVs while sweeping some dark truths under the rug. But fear not, I'm about to blow the lid off this whole charade. If you've been sold on the idea that EVs are the future, think again. Why are dealers fleeing from EVs? Why are over 4,000 EVs gathering dust in what they call EV graveyards? And why is Uncle Joe Biden pumping billions into EVs? Yet folks aren't biting. The EV dream is quickly turning into a nightmare and I'm here to spill the beans on why it all went south. And if you're eyeing an EV bargain, stick around because this video might just save you a fortune. Let's get down to brass tacks. Ford, GM, Tesla, Jeep, you name it. All the big names are slamming on the brakes when it comes to EV production. Biden's peddling the EV pitch, but the masses? Well, we're starting to see through the smoke and mirrors. Turns out, EVs aren't as eco-friendly as they'd have you believe. But before I dive into the dirty details, let's talk about how this crash is going to hit us where it hurts. The EV market has hit rock bottom, taking several big shots along with it. But just how bad is it? Picture Ford selling EVs at a whopping $36,000 loss per car. Tesla's slashing prices left, right and center with price cuts hitting three digits in a single quarter. Meanwhile, dealer lots are bursting at the seams with unsold EVs. And get this, Used EVs are going for a steal, down by a staggering 33.7% on average since October 2022. That's a jaw-dropping $17,860 drop, with the typical used EV now fetching around $34,999, compared to a hefty $52,821 a year earlier. Even Tesla, the gold standard of EVs, is feeling the pinch in dollar terms. The Model X took a hit down by $21,775, while the Model S and Model 3 saw decreases of $18,596 and $14,716 respectively. But what about those folks who've already jumped on the EV bandwagon? They're feeling the pinch too, grappling with three hefty hidden costs that caught them off guard. I'll unpack those later in the video, but first, let's talk damage control. According to the latest sales report, Used EV sales have tanked by 30% this year and new EVs are languishing twice as long on the market compared to their non-electric counterparts. Why the cold shoulder? Well, it boils down to three key reasons. Steep upfront costs, lackluster range, and subpar charging infrastructure. Meanwhile, good old combustion cars are enjoying the limelight. They're affordable and straightforward, and they just work. And it's not just a handful of brands feeling the squeeze. Every EV maker is feeling the heat. Sales are plummeting across the board, setting off a chain reaction of doom. And here's the kicker. Used EVs are about as popular as a skunk in a perfume store. They're practically unsellable, with their values nosediving by 30% year over year. Take a peek at the Tesla app and you'll see the grim reality. A 2020 Tesla has lost half its value in just three years, a whopping 50% drop. And that's not even factoring in battery degradation. But hold that thought. High interest rates and sneaky dealer markups are only adding salt to the wound, making EV ownership a distant dream for many. Elon Musk, the brain behind Tesla, even hit the brakes on plans for a new factory because of this chaos. It's a big deal when the top dog in the EV game starts having second thoughts. Raw material prices for EV batteries are also taking a tumble, which might sound like good news at first, but hold your horses, it's actually a red flag. It signals a slowdown in demand and has the market feeling jittery. Even Ford is scaling back, trimming shifts at their F-150 Lightning plant. And over in Japan, Nidex shares took a nosedive due to all this uncertainty. It's a global freakout. So, what's the lowdown for you and me? Well, if you're eyeing an EV, you might want to pump the brakes. The market's in a tailspin and things are only going to get wilder. China, the biggest market for EVs, has a dirty little secret I'm about to spill. There's a so-called EV graveyard where over 10,000 EVs were dumped. This exposes the government's failure and their feeble attempts to sweep it under the rug. Both the Chinese and the Germans dove headfirst into EVs with grand visions, only to face billion dollar losses when reality hit. Now, American customers, known for their love of gas guzzlers, 
have been slow to hop on the EV bandwagon, but Ford and GM have already splurged over $3 billion on the F-150 Lightning and the Silverado EV. You'd think they'd be flying off the shelves, but here's the kicker. There's zero demand for their electric siblings. Okay, so we're headed for an EV apocalypse. But what happens when these EVs are left abandoned? The environmental impact is huge. Each battery contains precious materials like nickel, lithium, and cobalt vital resources for the EV industry's sustainability. Plus, ditching these vehicles undermines their supposed environmental benefits, which only kick in after years of use. But hold on, can't companies just stop making EVs if they're not selling and go back to gas guzzlers and hybrids? Well, they could, but a big player is calling the shots here. You can't say no to him. You can't just stop production. All you see is the middle class struggling, while the Biden administration, with its EV obsession, sends a clear message. It's EVs or bust. And those sky-high prices? They're just luring people into the trap of hefty monthly payments. How many of you watching have a car payment of over $300 a month? Dealers are fed up. So much so that 3,000 of them joined forces to give Biden a piece of their mind in a fiery letter. More than 3,000 auto dealers nationwide, spanning all 50 states and representing every major car brand, have penned an open letter to President Biden, airing their concerns about the administration's push towards electric vehicles. Their argument is simple, yet striking. EVs aren't flying off the shelves as anticipated, leaving dealerships saddled with surplus unsold EVs despite various incentives and price cuts. They're urging for a slowdown in the transition and an end to the pressure on the average consumer to adopt EVs. But wait, there's more to consider. Did you know you'll also need a $6,000 insurance policy for your EV? No joke. Let's delve into this for a moment. First off, Let's chat about the true cost of owning an EV. Initially hailed as the future of motoring, cleaner, greener, and cheaper in the long run, the reality of maintaining and insuring an EV is painting a different picture. Repair costs can skyrocket, especially if there's any damage to the EV's battery. Even a minor collision can result in repair bills soaring exponentially. While you might think a small dent or scratch on a battery casing isn't a big deal, insurance companies beg to differ. They often require complete battery replacements for even the slightest damage. This means going from a one zero 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 dollar repair job to a whopping one fifty five zero 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 dollar expense, all due to the strict standards set by insurers and car manufacturers' cautious approach to battery integrity. And let's not forget about insurance costs for EVs, which are proving to be yet another hidden obstacle for owners. EV owners are facing soaring insurance premiums, with some seeing their rates triple. This comes as a real shock to those who expected lower operating costs. Take Tesla owners, for example, who've seen their insurance premiums skyrocket from manageable amounts to eye-watering figures, reaching as high as $6,000 per year. This surge in insurance costs is partly due to the higher expense of repairing EVs and the perceived risks associated with their batteries. And amidst all this chaos, President Biden has issued yet another contentious anti-EV mandate. There's a fresh directive making the rounds, essentially telling federal government workers, hey, from now on, it's EVs or bust. If you don't comply, there'll be consequences. This directive means giving priority to electric vehicles, trains, and public transportation for all official government business. Back in his campaign days, Biden made some lofty promises about cutting emissions. Now, with the elections looming, he's pulling out all the stops to push EVs, even if it means phasing out traditional combustion engines. The White House is doubling down on tailpipe emissions regulations, proposing some of the strictest rules yet. Their goal? to ensure a significant chunk of new vehicle purchases are electric by 2032. This isn't just about nudging folks towards EVs, it's about making it harder to stick with gas-powered cars. Critics argue that these moves could drive up costs for consumers. And then there's the issue of EV supply and the infrastructure needed to support it. Charging stations, energy grids, you name it. There's a lot that needs to fall into place for this transition to succeed. And let's not forget the geopolitical angle. Many critical materials for EV batteries come from overseas, especially in China. So, transitioning to EVs also means navigating international politics and trade dynamics. What we're witnessing is a massive push from the US government to steer the nation towards electric vehicles. It's a bold move, ambitious even and it's going to be fascinating to see how it all pans out. Politicians are taking the wheel, while companies seem to be brushing aside their customers' demands. But mark my words, 
this could all blow up in their faces. Do you believe political leaders are calling the shots in the EV market? Will EVs become more affordable anytime soon? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Get ready for a significant shift in the automotive landscape as Toyota unveils its groundbreaking new engine, poised to render electric vehicles obsolete. This innovative engine, touted as the most environmentally friendly option to date, marks a paradigm shift in the automotive industry. Toyota's latest endeavor focuses on a water-powered engine, a concept akin to their fuel cell electric vehicles like the Toyota Mirai and hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines. Water engines have long been an ambition within the automotive sector due to their potential advantages over conventional engines and EVs. Despite numerous attempts to make water-powered engines feasible for everyday use, previous efforts have fallen short. However, Toyota's entry into this arena promises a different outcome. Unlike past endeavors undertaken with limited resources, Toyota's well-funded initiative allows for thorough testing under various conditions. So how does this water engine work? Essentially, it operates similarly to a hydrogen generator, but with key improvements tailored for vehicular applications. Comparable to Toyota's hydrogen combustion engines, such as those found in the Yaris GRH2, the water engine undergoes a chemical reaction to separate hydrogen from oxygen, eliminating the need for pre-processed hydrogen. The engine essentially utilizes electrolysis to split H2O molecules, separating hydrogen and oxygen. High voltages from electrodes in the water tank trigger this separation. Unlike fuel cell electric vehicles and hydrogen combustion engines, which require heavy and armored tanks to contain pure hydrogen, the hydrogen in water eliminates this need. When it comes to powering the vehicle, the process aligns with hydrogen combustion engines. The separated hydrogen is directed to the engine where it combusts, akin to compressed natural gas. The engine's operation resembles that of CNG-powered engines, necessitating adjustments to fuel injectors and reinforcing components like cylinder heads, pistons, and valves due to hydrogen's combustibility. In terms of long-term environmental benefits, the water engine offers nearly zero emissions, akin to EVs. Yet, it boasts greater convenience requiring only diluted water for refueling. This convenience surpasses other engine types, making it an attractive option. Additionally, widespread adoption could reduce the need for oil extraction, further benefiting the environment. In heavy machinery and large power units, fossil fuels might remain the primary option. However, with water engines, there's no necessity for extracting rare metals from the earth, a process notorious for its environmental impact polluting both water sources and surrounding soil, rendering areas uninhabitable. Comparing water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and FCEVs touted as zero emission solutions highlights their superiority. Water storage requires minimal effort, unlike hydrogen, which demands precise conditions and substantial investment. Hydrogen, being a volatile gas, poses challenges in containment, necessitating armored tanks and rigorous maintenance. In contrast, water-powered vehicles can utilize common plastic containers for storage. Storing hydrogen externally presents further challenges, requiring specific temperature conditions and sturdy infrastructure adding to costs. In contrast, distilled water is readily available in supermarkets or can be produced at home with basic chemistry knowledge. Moreover, acquiring pure hydrogen is costly and compounded by storage issues, hindering its widespread adoption. The production and storage of hydrogen incur significant costs driving up the overall expense for consumers. This raises the question, why opt for hydrogen cars when they're pricier to purchase and operate compared to EVs and traditional fossil fuel vehicles? Despite their environmental friendliness and logistical simplicity, the practicality of water engines for daily use is a valid concern. However, water engines prove to be highly usable in everyday scenarios. Contrary to misconceptions, they offer comparable performance to gasoline engines and have the potential to surpass them in power output, generating up to three times more energy in theory. Moreover, they boast superior safety features, eliminating the risk associated with highly combustible fuels. Their simple mechanical design makes water engines easy to produce and cost-effective. They outshine both EVs and FCEVs in terms of affordability and simplicity, making them an attractive option, especially for developing countries lacking in oil resources. Notably, an Iranian scientist successfully converted his Peugeot 
405 to run on water, demonstrating the viability of this technology. Aladdin Kasemi, a scientist, achieved a remarkable feat by converting his old car into a fully functional water-powered vehicle, showcasing the potential of this technology. While his DIY project demonstrates what can be achieved with limited resources, one can only imagine the advancements Toyota could make with adequate funding. Beyond their ease of production, water-powered engines offer exceptional fuel efficiency, surpassing both gasoline and electric vehicles. Kasemi's modified 405 achieves an impressive 30 to 40 miles per gallon of water, far exceeding the performance of its original petrol engine. This suggests that future water-powered engines could achieve even greater mileage, making them more cost-effective to run. However, Despite the promise of water engines, their widespread adoption faces several hurdles. While the infrastructure requirements are minimal, the technology itself remains experimental. Many early prototypes have been unreliable, raising questions about their practicality for daily use. As such, while water engines hold potential as a future vehicle technology, their viability hinges on overcoming these challenges. Moreover, while using water as a fuel appears promising, safety concerns arise due to the separation of water into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, notorious for its difficulty in containment, poses significant risks if leaked, potentially leading to dangerous and even fatal consequences. Even if Toyota were to develop a reliable and secure water-powered vehicle, there's speculation about potential backlash from lithium mining, battery, and oil companies. Adopting water as a fuel source could significantly reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and diminish the need for mining rare elements like cobalt, and lithium. This shift could disrupt some of the world's most lucrative companies, such as Rio Tinto, prompting them to oppose further development of water engines. In fact, rumors suggest that similar opposition occurred 25 years ago when Stanley Allen Meyer invented the first fully functional water-powered car. Meyer reportedly faced constant threats and offers to suppress his invention allegedly from representatives of oil companies. Tragically, Meyer's sudden death under suspicious circumstances only added to the controversy. While official records attribute his passing to a brain aneurysm, doubts linger, fueled by the mysterious disappearance of his car and engine plans shortly after his death. Given this history, it's uncertain whether Toyota will proceed with developing a water-powered engine, especially considering the potential secrecy surrounding such endeavors. As of now, there are no official confirmations regarding Toyota's involvement in such a project, leaving the future of water engines shrouded in uncertainty. At Toyota, where the focus has predominantly been on hybrids rather than fully electric vehicles, Chairman Akio Toyota frankly told reporters that people are finally seeing reality. Even some EV owners now express a desire for gas-powered cars or a water-powered engine. But what's behind this trend? Let's dig into the burning issue. Numerous studies have indicated that EVs don't pose a greater fire risk than traditional gasoline-powered cars. However, the real challenge lies in effectively tackling an EV fire as conventional firefighting methods often prove inadequate. While it's clear that the overall risk of EV fires isn't higher, the crux of the matter lies in the difficulty of extinguishing such fires. Traditional firefighting techniques, which typically work well with conventional vehicles, fall short when dealing with EVs. Unlike combustion engine cars, where depriving the fire of oxygen is a primary firefighting strategy, EVs have built-in oxygen sources within their batteries, making this approach ineffective.